Hello and welcome to my uh, random trinkets video. I'm going to start with Magneto. Uh, this is a sort of positron uh, electron interaction simulator, not really, but I just start one with a few settings adjusted. And this is the output. So it's just kind of like a spirus spiroscope? That doesn't sound right. But a spirograph, that's it. Um, and it draws these patterns, and you can adjust the friction if you want to say, uh, you know, collapse it into the center. You can do that, or you could have it explode outwards by giving it negative friction. So it's just going to get um, like faster and faster and escape the previous course. And let me clear this, or I'll just refresh the page and start over. So let's say I want to do something that drifts to the right. I'll just start that. So this is at low speed. Um, this is the speed of execution, so if I just move this up. You can see the pattern's kind of drifting away, so let me turn on the friction and make a sort of um, pointed pattern. Kind of looks like a seashell, maybe. Um, I like that kind of thing when it makes this kind of pattern. It's just aesthetic to me. Let's say I made the X turn the other way, and I turn the friction back to negative. Um, what will gradually happen is it uh, will just start drifting the other way because actually, the way these are applied. Um, they uh, go by their own timer that's separate from the speed, which is kind of a terrible design. Um, anyway, what this should do is it'll go back the other way and blow up on the way there. It might take a while. Oh, you can also, um, let me just set this over. Let's see, start this out with a nice uh, X and Y force and let's put it at high speed. All right, so we got this um, sort of like quantum logo, I guess. But you, if you hit adjust, ooh, that was a bad time to do it. But uh, it adjusts it by the amount of force. So let's, let's try a small amount of force just to start out. And then I'll adjust by the small amount of force. I just keep clicking adjust. So you can kind of mess with their trajectory like that. Um, and then there's color chaos mode, so let me just start this up, and then I'll click color chaos, and I'll a nice high speed as well. So you get this, uh, rainbowish, it's random colors, so it could be, you know, various different patterns, uh, they just change every tick. And, uh, <laughs> awesome. oh, I think something else I can do with this. Oh yeah, that's right. If you click somewhere, it moves one of them to that spot, which can uh, recenter the sort of pattern. So like, if, uh, it's easier when they're different colors. But like, if I keep track of where the other one is, you can make a really small. Oh, um, you can make like a really small one. I just like making these patterns. Um, so that's Magneto. And then next one, I guess, would be maybe Firework. This one is um, kind of just uh, supposed to be like a Firework. This is a very early project. Um, so let me put the spark velocity pretty high. And I'll turn off the clear interval. And you can also move the Firework around. And you can clear. But there's also total clear, which removes the sparks because clear just clears the canvas. There's clap, which is kind of cool because they zoom back in. Um, and randomizer makes them kind of wiggly. Um, and you can uh, I'm gonna put this guy back in the center, total clear, and then clap with these wiggly guys. They don't actually come straight back in. They make these kind of check mark patterns. Um, and with low spark velocity. Total clear and high clear interval. You get this kind of sort of 
sparks. Turn the randomizer off. And I might have to put a seizure warning on this. Um, honestly, my entire website should have a seizure warning. Um, box click isn't much of a trinket, but if you click it, it just keeps track of how many times you click the box. And the timer up in this corner, if it goes all the way around, you lose. And this is easy, the easy setting, which obviously is quite easy. You just click the box, you got plenty of time. You'll probably get a couple hundred if you're patient enough to play on this mode. But uh, if I put it on insane, and then I, I'm going to have to lose because I adjusted mid difficulty. So my score is like 30 right now, but that's not, that's not correct. That's not what my insane score is going to end up being. A reasonably high score on insane uh, is like 18. And I'm playing on a trackpad, so I don't have that much faith in myself. Okay, so here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, ooh, 13, 14, ah, click 15, okay, well, that was not bad, that's basically box click, um, Solomon Clicks is like an idle game, so if I start clicking the yellow one, it's lit up right now so I can get a bunch of points on it, and I'm just going to take it to 100 so I can get the auto incomer for yellow and then I'm gonna get the yellow auto clicker buy. So now I got income for yellow and red's lit up so I'm gonna try to get income for red. This is basically just like cookie clicker or, or any other kind of idle clicking game. Um there's not much substance to it, especially because uh like what I, the part that actually looks like a game is actually just like a uh like a clickable area. It's not really like I mean the lighting up it does um, it does modify how many points you get per click. Like at the start, it's uh, an extra point, which basically doubles how fast you're going. And uh, yeah, like at the bottom right here, it says click and lit. That's how many points you get when it's being clicked versus when it's lit. Um, or when you click it when it's lit versus when you click it when it's not lit. So I'm just trying to get income on blue, and then I'll try to balance out all of the... Um, all the value so I can buy um, the click bonus because the click bonus is actually really overpowered you kind of get rewarded for paying attention in this game um, versus just buying income uh, and there's definitely a point at this in this game where it, it breaks because of um, how much addition is happening basically like the numbers get so big that um, it, it, it just runs into the like type error. I should really be using like big decimal or something. Um, let's see. So I want to buy the click bonus. So that brought it up to six and ten, which is you know huge. So now I can get income. I can just click the lit up once for a minute here. Try to get a bunch of um, points in each color. Try to get maybe three hundred of each. Right, and then I'm going to buy the click bonus max. Now this is 21, 34, so I can get up really high, really fast. So I just get like a thousand of each. This game is designed to be pretty much beaten in like five minutes. Like games like Cookie Clicker, you might have them running in your browser for days and days, and you know I definitely have. <laughs> but um. A game like this, you know, it's just a one and done all. I'm gonna buy a max of those, and I got 11 income each for these, and uh, that adds up pretty quick because I just effectively added like 40 per second, and then I'm also clicking now. So I'll get I'll get some more click bonus. And then um, probably just end it there because this, this basically doesn't get any different after the point where you start snowballing. You just kind of take it to the infinity. So, but it is kind of like it feels nice to go from like clicking a hundred times to clicking once to get the same amount. Um, let's see. I want to click bonus. 
at max, so it's 141 and 226. It's like ludicrously fast comparatively. Um, and yeah, it just, it just snowballs from here. So that's Simon Clicks. Um, and then this is Yeah Boy, or Yeah Buoy. Um, and these are just like balls of different densities. So like this one I think is um, water based. Like this is like a, as if the orb was made of water. Or, well, that was weird. Maybe not. Um, yeah so it's it's kind of messing up because I'm recording I think but um, with this one you can just like drag the balls um, oh you should be able to drag the balls I'm trying right now oh there we go okay yeah, I'm not sure if I can really demo this one, but like this one's made of styrofoam, so if you take it under the water, it like pops up and out, and it falls back to the water slowly, and it basically floats on the surface. And then like this one, um, yeah, I can't demo this one. That's too bad. But that one was basically like, supposed to be made of lead. Um, this is Rippler. And Rippler just makes ripples coming out of the center or wherever you click the Rippler to be. And uh, I can make the spacing really big, like a uh, kind of psychedelic 70s thing. Turn the speed down or up. And with low spacing, you get this sort of like hypnotic jawbreaker effect, like you're going to the center of a piece of candy. Um, and then you can also make it follow the mouse which gives you the ability to like trace it's like tracing your finger across a pond made out of paint um yeah that's pretty cool looks like a dr seuss landscape um but that that's basically just rippler it just does this um and that's all it has to do um the gas compressor, this one will probably take like 20 minutes to actually execute if I'm recording. Let me turn the speed to maximum. So the way this works is uh, these particles have collision. This was one of the first times I ever tried to figure out circular collision and see if I could get things to bounce off each other in a reasonable way. Um, and it's not quite reasonable. If you look closely, the, the circles have like sort of like bizarre collisions that don't quite make sense. Um, and what's happening here is, is the area that they can occupy is being squished into the top left corner. Uh, at a certain point when they're really, really packed in, the walls will snap back to the edge of the canvas and they'll, they'll snap back to like here. And uh, when that happens, the gas, since it's so compressed, the collisions net forces outwards. And uh, they just blow up out of the area um, in like a, I find it gratifying. Like they, it's like if you had like a soda can that you opened, or or they have to shake it, or if you like, uh, and obviously this is like incredibly dangerous. But like if you threw like a CO two cartridge in a fire, uh, <laughs> don't ever do that. Um, just disclaimer: it's incredibly dangerous. Um, yeah, so uh, they're gonna go off in like now ish, or maybe now. Maybe like 20 minutes from now, who knows. But it should be only a few seconds. There we go. And they just like bounce out. And then when they hit the newly incoming walls, they have like a ricochet kind of thing. Um, so this is supposed to be like, uh, maybe not exactly, but like a, a gas compressor in a car. Or um, I'm not even sure what that, if that's what they're called, but that sort of thing where an engine continually compresses gas and then decompresses it and compresses it and decompresses it. This just does that over and over. Um, but in, in 2D, obviously. Um, it's Cognito. And you are just this gear. I want it spinning. It's recording really badly. I, I'm going to start over with fewer circles. Maybe, there we go. Yeah, it's a lot fewer. So if I walk onto this thing or move the gray gear, 
onto the white gear then the um, the teeth when they mesh up they have collision and it's supposed to do like gear style physics which is not great but uh, it's kind of nice looking honestly uh, at, at normal speed this is a lot more you know nice to look at and that's basically it um, I mean like I said these don't deserve their own video this is just like trinkets um, this is a Barnsley fern and I called it make like a tree because it's a leaf and these question marks the reason I put question marks on them is because I'm not sure if they have like names in English for what they're doing because it's like this specific fractal that like what question question does I mean it's like this versus this I mean what's the name what's the name for doing that right like I, I don't know um, what about let's see what this one does I think this one's the granularity maybe so like on this end not nah. okay so shape like that versus whoa haha <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's a little different. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, this one's sharper. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, so this is narrow leaves. This is fat leaves. Okay. This is stemier. See the stems? I don't know. Or the, 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 the veins of the leaves. This is just a Barnsley furnace generator. Um, and then, Rainbow Spire Transform is probably not going to run very well. Um, let me turn the drive wheels up and I'll turn the max diameter way down. These things are the Rainbow Spire Trons, and they just kind of spin um, and move, and there's no clear on the canvas. Oh, there's like less clear so it creates these sort of like spiraling patterns this would just be a lot better at normal speed um and then they hit the max diameter so like i could actually turn that way up and it like shoots out or break down and you can see the curve of when i did that but um yeah i'm gonna just like drop out of this one there's not not much to show this is waves and uh so it just creates like by default this sort of sine wave um, and you can make it a little bit tighter or longer not like a super amount but the uh, the uh, amplitude basically oh wait right you, in the middle is the longest waveform okay yeah at the very center it's actually perfectly still um, and then it goes the other way yeah Anyway, um, and then the speed, uh, you're going to go really fast, or really slow, or is it stopped? And the retention is how long the image stays on the canvas. So if you turn it to max, uh, it'll just keep drawing over itself and it'll never delete. But if you turn it to no retention, you can see it's just a dot. Um, low retention you can get, it's like almost like a snake. Um, and then I say I want it to be red and I wanted to do some weird Y convolution thing which oh and I can mention the amplitude as well um, an X convolution or uh, just Y oh that's weird like a shark fin um, yeah that's that's kind of cool, like a saw. Um, or waves, maybe. Yeah. Uh, that's waves, though. And then Garble Golf. I'll zoom off for this one. Um, the, uh, the red and blue orbs repel and attract your golf ball. So I'll just drop my golf ball. Right, just whatever. I'll drop it here and then it tracks where your golf ball goes through this sort of like constellation of attraction and repulsion and in this case it flew out but they usually come back um, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna start over. All right, how about I start way out here? All right, falls into the red one. Repel by the blue one. They get these interesting patterns. Um, that one will definitely be back. Uh, and it's just basically like a single object flowing through uh, an attractor and repulsor field. And uh, the idea was that it would be like you, there's like some place you have to land the ball. And uh, otherwise it would just like follow its path. Um, this game is always, or not even a game, this is like a trinket now, but it, it was never completed um, or even scaled. And you only get one shot per load, so it's a pretty terrible, um, pretty terrible web page, honestly. <laughs> That's why it's Garbo Golf, like garbage, because it's 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 barely you know anything at all. It, it's kind of nice to watch this happen, um, but it gets boring pretty quick. So I'll just move on to the next one. After, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Whoa. Uh, okay, so this is Zen Fruit Picker, and uh, you wait, a fruit grows on the tree, you pick it, that's one point, pick it, pick it, and it's just a game where you click the fruits as they grow on the trees, and pick them, and these trees in the background can grow fruits too, it takes a while, um, because the way the fruit spawning works is actually... A random position on the screen is picked, and if it's inside of a tree, um, it it becomes a valid fruit. I'd like to see one of those little fruits on the uh, there, that little spot. You can pick it. Yeah. So yeah, the trees in the background grow fruit. Um, then more basic. Oh god, this game is so difficult. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by. Um, trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm light blue. The other guy's beige. And uh, I need to try to... Oh wait, no. I'm beige. Wait. Am I? What's going on here? Yeah, I must be. No, I'm, I'm not. I can't tell anymore. I'm just going to keep clicking this button. Hopefully it ends up working out. The thing with this is the AI is like way too good at this game. Like really way too good at this game. And it'll beat you pretty much indefinitely unless you, you know, almost like write a script to click the button super fast because it, it has like instantaneous execution. So. Yeah, now I gotta be, I gotta be beige because my income is going up and my increased spawn. Yeah, I, I gotta be beige. Okay. So then, if that's the case, then I should try to keep it up with that. Yeah, okay. I need to catch up my spawn rate to the enemy. Just to make sure it doesn't destroy my base. Yeah, this is where it gets really harsh because once you're in an arms race to spawn faster than the other guy, um, you gotta push hard and just like keep clicking basically and, and try to make sure that they don't gain the advantage at any point because they get points for every enemy they kill just like you do. Um, I'm gonna try to do a major spawn. Let's see if I can take this guy out. I don't know, I won't be able to take him out with another using damage. Alright, super fast spawning. Oh, this is going pretty well for me. <laughs> I think I'm gonna win.
right? Yeah, the spawn every 44 milliseconds is actually really high. I'm surprised that it's um, doing so poorly. I think maybe because the computer is running slowly, the AI is busted maybe, but yeah, like, I mean, it's almost like I'm pushing the button in between frames, so I'm executing almost instantaneously. I guess that makes sense. I mean, typically this runs a lot faster, which would mean you'd have less time to click the button. Um, and this is something I didn't know about this game, but I guess it's, it's like highly execution speed dependent on the AI function. So I guess it looks like I won right there. And now the whole world is beige except for the little town that they get to live in. That's called auto checkers on the, uh... <laughs> Everything is beige, his house. Uh, words to your ambiguousness, Lee. This is, oh, so absolvent is my word. I'll try to spell that. A, B, S, O, L. E. E. Uh, N. T. So I got nine points for that, but now those letters are gone. The idea is you just try to spell uh, as many words as you can before you run out of letters. And it's it's really really bad, especially because the words that it, it like this super praise. It's not even a word. Episomal is a word, but moral. Orniorness falls. Realizing. Raw boned. Beholdings. Underbought. Westlands. Yeah, this, this game is very strange. Um, then there's. I don't, know, I don't even know if I want to load this page because it's so demanding. Okay, yeah, so it makes a gradient. And you can, uh, you can click on the bar to like change the way the gradient is set up. And uh, if you wanted to, you could save image as and save the gradient. Um, and then there's a conspiratron, which uh, it's like a, a web of conspiracy, so I can start adding nodes to it. It's like, they're all connected, can't you see? And then uh, you can reduce the connections. What happens if I go to zero? Oh, wow. Nice. It's almost like I designed it not to crash. Great. Okay, so you can stop it. And so you kind of drag these things. Wow, you can drag these things around. It's pretty cool. So you can kind of make your own conspiracy web. Um, like an actual one. Um, you can circularize them, and you can add more nodes that are moving when the other ones aren't. Circularize, reverse, and do like a sort of warping back and forth. Or start a moving, circularize, reverse. I don't know, I just like that a lot. You can keep adding nodes. I think there's a limit, but I'm not sure. It might be like 200. Um, huh. Anyway, that's... um. Spiritron. And then Wormer. This is a worm that moves around in the dirt, and when you click somewhere, it's like magnetized to that spot. And you can also use WASD to play it like Snake. So if you click WASD, you cancel its momentum, and you uh, you start controlling it like this. What I, I like just going half and half. Um, you know, like especially. It gets longer every time it eats dirt. Um, man, this thing's not great. There we go. Takes a while to get to where you clicked. I mean, keep in mind it's blind. Um, if you click up here, it'll do like a jump, but it comes back into the dirt. And um, yeah, it's pretty much warmer. Drip drop. It just rains 
or drip drops, you know, raindrops. Uh, that's, that's the entire thing. Oh man, bloomer. I hope this runs well. Oh, no, not really. Okay. Slow down. Yeah, this is not going to be worth showing at low frame rate. But uh, I'm putting max speed. This is sort of a. I forget the name for it. It's similar to how flowers lay out their seeds. Like uh, the, um, the, the like asters, uh, asteraceae, like dandelions and such. Um, yeah, it just runs through these sort of patterns. Uh, it never stops, and then it gets back to the start. Um, yeah, Dongo Dongo, this is, it's like a Katamari. In 2D, you pick up these rocks, and you get bigger, and they stick to the rocks, and, and that's pretty much it. There's no specific goal. You can just collect a bunch of dots and get really huge until you can't see what you're picking up anymore because you've gone off the screen. And stack zone. This game's kind of cool. It's not, not a game really, but you can shoot rectangles that uh, when they hit each other they stick and then they become a platform so you can walk on them and you can uh, if you jump onto the spikes the death in it will miss explode and you reform you just reform right above it explode and reform anyway uh, that's stack zone um, bully ball so you're this red dot and you use WASD to try to be the last dot on the platform there's no consequence for going outside it's just like you keep track for yourself um, but you want to knock all the balls that aren't you out of the arena and every time you do you get bigger and faster and they do they get bigger and faster too which makes them harder to knock out um, and they're not they're trying to knock you out each other as well uh, they have like a targeting system and they just go for each other and uh, they, should, they should probably all be different colors it's really confusing Especially because the void is black. But, um. Get somebody out of here. Yeah, look how much bigger I am. Ha ha ha. Oop, I went out. I lose. But this, this game is based on, um. The bullies, bully the bullies from uh, Mario 64 on Lava Lava something, or Lava, I don't know. Um, let's see, that was Bully Ball, so round bound, you play as this dot, and you try to go around and bound, and as you do, the platforms go through rotation, and they get, like, mutated a little bit. There's no scorekeeping, it's just like, how far can you go? And they get, they get like, pretty difficult, depending on, it's random, but they can get pretty difficult. And you barely just jump high enough to go over three. So when there's, yeah, that one. The two and, and the two and the, yeah, that's the hardest one probably. Maybe this one. And uh, when you run into a platform, you die. Like that. And you can get stuck dying. Um, yep, and that's round round. And then I'll turn off the sound for the next one. Oh, 
to turn off the sound for the next one because tractor scheme is ridiculously loud. Uh, uh, let's see. O to turn off repulsion. U to turn on suction. Okay. So I can suck in these red dots and they make my ship more powerful. Um, or I could repel the dots, the, the red dots. The, the pink and yellow and the green and gray dots are enemy ships. And then these weird like squids are like the things you can attack with the dots. So if they're in your tractor beam, you can attack the squids and blow them up. Like, uh, <laughs> get them. Got him. Um, and then once in a while, a giant squid will spawn. Um, these ones are just small. They're just, um, as Bender would say, something and they die easy. They just die easy. Um, because they have so much less health than the big ones. Um, this game's super loud when the volume's on. Uh, and it's, that's probably the biggest failing. The tractor room's kind of cool. Um, next thing is terrible graphics. This is a graph that you can platform on. It's like the quarterly sales report or whatever. And uh, it's called terrible graphics because the graphics are really bad. And this game is terrible graphics. So it's kind of meta. Um, <laughs> anyway, you can collect these orange dots and uh, the controls are a little bit like Meat Boy with like wall jumping and uh, uh, like running and, and jumping and stuff and you can like platform up the same wall. Um, but there's no way to die and there's actually this super confusing thing. If I stand on, yeah, that, that's it. If I stand on like one of these platforms, what happens is you're shifted with it when the graph shifts. So I'll just be carried all the way to the end if I ride this this graph. And um, as the small data points get like removed, like that one that's zero just got removed, I drop a little bit because it's like the scale of the the chunks is relative to the average so um, you can get lifted up or drop down and then at the end of the graph you just fall to the next segment or rise up to the top of the next segment and uh, that's pretty much terrible graphics um, just a sort of platformer on a graph um, wiggle wall when you uh, shoot these like white dots, you create like gravity fields that warp their position, and uh, they like splash around like waves. And you can hold it down. Oh no, you can't actually. You just gotta click over and over. And you can make like a big spike like there, where they're all passing through. Um, this game's just not, it's obviously not a game. I mean, it's just like a trinket, but like it's a weird one. Um, because these walls, their physics doesn't, it's not intuitive. Like, it's really difficult to figure out like what they're actually going to do. Um, but that's where the wall. Um, so Rainbow Runner, this one's crazy difficult. So I never made it into a whole game, but um, what the idea is that all of your limbs are like springish and uh, you have to control them with WASD and the arrow keys because there's the two legs which have back and forth put, uh, controls and then there's the two arms which have up and down controls and oh I did it I made it to the other wall above that platform which according to me is the goal um, so yeah, it's uh, it's really strange. If I angle my purple arm down, I'll be able to go up a little higher. Wait, let me try. No. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So this thing has like a bunch of weird physics. Um, 
yeah, and I call it the Rainbow Runner. Um, because it's made out of various colors, but it's obviously not a rainbow either. Anyway, that, that's that thing. And this spot. So if I click one of these red dots, uh, I'll trigger the chain reaction. And then every red dot that intersects with that red dot, like basically becomes the active one, whichever one is the most recently activated, runs through its cycle of like expanding until it activates another one. And then it's put on hold basically until the other one is finished activating. So like the big one that's, that's floating around, um, it, it had activated a different one and then it sub activated another one. And, and it's just this chain reaction where uh, the white dots are gradually converted to red dots and then they explode. Um, and this was based on a game called Splode. I think it was called Splode. Uh, for phones, or probably more than phones, but I only ever played it on a phone. And the idea was that you would click just one splode or spot on the screen and see how many splodes you could set up to explode when they go near other ones and they would bounce around. Um, and the idea was to try to get all of them and this, this one, you basically can't not get all of them because um, the detonation system is so, like, weighted in favor of the red ones with their ability to, like, get big but then stop activating. Um, it, I've never actually seen any white ones left at the end of this because what will eventually happen is all the red ones will detonate and all the white ones will have been within the range of the detonation and converted to red. So, just that one left, right? Right there. Let's see if I can make it. Nope, there we go. So now they're just going to step backwards through the activation and, uh, and detonate one at a time, basically. And it should get faster as there's fewer of them because it's, it's doing less collision checking. Yeah, it's speeding up. And as they dwindle, it gets up to maximum speed and ta da, they're gone. Um, next, I've got a uh, laser scroller, which in this scan, you try to move the laser by scrolling through the angles and pulling it in and out in length, and getting all of these bombs before they fall down to the ground, because um, if they hit the ground, they'll blow up your home, uh, but... Also, um, if they hit the white part, it, I don't think it actually counts because you can't realistically hit something that's going to be inside the white part, but it hasn't hit the ground yet. So let's see if it does count. Let these yellow ones hit the white part. Yeah, no. Oh, whoa, it does count. Haha, <laughs> that's terrible. Anyway, that's laser scroller. Um, power tower. This game is really, really straightforward. You click these red squares and you fill them with these green dots or blue dots alternatively and uh, as you do that it costs points and they are basically towers it's like a tower defense game um, let me just set all of them up oh, I don't need more points all right, and then the enemies start coming through and they get lasered and slowed down the blue ones slow them down the green ones do more damage and uh, I get some points from that. Oh no. Gotta get that guy. He took some points from me. He just bounced back through. There's not really any punishment. Um, this is basically just the whole game. You just can upgrade the towers. It costs, I think, 50 points to upgrade green, maybe 200 for blue, or something like that. Anyway, that's Power Towers. And then Power Towers Freeform, 
Uh, this game is buggy. But you can make a sort of maze. Uh, the reason it's so buggy is um, there's no pathfinding in this game. Even though the enemies have to go along a specific path. So they're really easy to block. And as a result, you can't make any paths that turn backwards or they'll get stuck. Um, they just try to go left and right until they run into a wall and then they go the other way. So I'll just start this up. Ah, jeez. He went outside the maze. Oh, no. Oh, man, they got me. <laughs> yeah, should have blocked him off. Oh, well, they're taking all my points. But that's, uh, that's the, the, the basis of the game. Let me just make like, a really powerful power. Try to take him out when I can. Um. Maybe if I block him off like this. Yeah, I guess this is a freeform game because they're walking outside of the area. Um, yep. Oh, wow, my points are negative. Even better. This game has no validations at all. Who made this crap? Anyway, um, on that note, I think I'm going to end this video. I don't think I should probably do all the trinkets in one go, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching.